probabilistic sampling methods. So consider these two scenarios. Mr. De La Cruz wants to analyze the final statistics examination scores in his 40 grade 11 class for the semester. Should he consider all the students' scores or only some of the students' scores? Mr. De La Cruz can consider all his students' scores because 40 is just a small number of population. Now, in the second scenario, Mrs. Marites wants to determine the average statistics grade for the second semester of grade 11 students in the Philippines. Should she consider conducting a survey to all grade 11 students in the Philippines or random students of selected places? She can just conduct a survey to random students of selected places because it is very time-consuming and costly to interview all the grade 11 students in the Philippines. So that's why we have these probabilistic sampling methods in order for us or for the researchers to determine who are their respondents. So we have these two terms, population and sample. Population is the group, group you want to generalize. It consists of all the members of the group you are interested in. While well, a sample is the subset from the population you want to examine. Note, a well-chosen sample will contain most of the information about a particular population parameter. But the relation between the sample and the population must be such as to allow true inferences to be made about a population from that sample sampling what is sampling sampling is a process used in statistical analysis in which a predetermined number of observations or your sample size are taken from a larger population probabilistic sampling methods probability sampling refers to the selection of a sample from a population when this selection is based on the principle of randomization that is random selection or chance so let's have the four probabilistic sampling method the first one is a simple random sampling each element of the population has an equal chance of being selected there are no rules that dictate where and how you will start the selection process as long as you do not intentionally look for a specific number so most common example, we have the lottery method. Every member is assigned a unique number. These numbers are put in a jar and thoroughly mixed. After that, the researcher picks some numbers without looking at it and those people are included in the study. Another example for this one also is the during Christmas, we have the Manito, Manito and Manita. So you're required to submit your code name or pseudonym and then you will just pick randomly from a box or a bowl who will become your manito or manita. Also, other teachers also use the spin the wheel for the oral recitation. So the teacher has no control of who will answer the question. And also, we also have the bowl, wherein all of the names of the students will be put inside the bowl. And then for the oral recitation, the teacher will just pick one paper and then that one will answer the question. So that those are examples of simple random sampling. Next, we have the systematic random sampling. This can be done by listing all the elements in the population and selecting every kth element in your population list. It is often used on long population lists. To determine the interval to be used in identifying the samples to who will participate in the study, we will use the formula. K is equal to capital N, which is the whole population divided by the small n or the sample size. 
So, for example, if the whole population is 2,000 and you only need 500 as your sample. So, our K is equal to 2,000 divided by 500 which is equal to 4. So, meaning if you have a list of people, then every fourth name will be included in your respond as your respondents. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the number 4 on your list will be one of your respondent. Again, so another one. 1, 2, 3, 4. We have this one and so on. So, in this case, all numbers divisible or multiples of 4 will become part of your sample. Stratified random sampling. This can be done by first dividing the elements in the population into strata. And then samples are randomly selected from each stratum. Ensuring that each selected element is proportionately represented in the total population. So in this case, when we talk about stratified random sampling, the population is divided into groups and each group must have a representative each group must have a representative and in this case also it must be proportionately distributed okay the respondents must be proportionately distributed so our sampling fraction here is n over n so the small n is your sample size the capital n is the population size so for example assume you have a population of 1000 students with 500 from grade school 300 from high school and 200 from senior high school so grade school junior high school and senior high school will become our stratum okay then assume that your sample size is 400 so then we have so we list down first the given. So we have 500, 300, and 200. Then first, we need to find the proportion of each group to the total population. So in this case, we'll just do this. 500 divided by 1,000, so we have 0 0.5. 300 divided by 1,000, so we have 0 0.3. And for the senior high, we have 200 divided by 1,000, so we have 0.2. So these are the respected or respective proportions of this strata. Now to get the, the proportionate sample size for each stratum, all you need to do is to multiply the sample size which is 400 to its proportion. So 400 times 0 0.5 is 200, 400 times 0 0.3 is 120. And 400 times 0.2 is 80. So you can just add this 3 to make sure that it's really 400. So this means that you will gather a data from a 200 grade school students. For junior high school, you have 120 students. And for the senior high school, you must gather 80 or from 80 students. So take note, again, the basic concept for this stratified random sampling is each group or stratum must have a representative. Last, the cluster sampling. It is a multi-stage sampling method adapted when it is either impossible or impractical to compile an exhaustive list of elements found in the target population. The whole population is subdivided into clusters or groups. So the same thing with stratified. The whole population is divided into strata or groups. Now for cluster sampling, uh, from out of these clusters or groups, we will only select random number of cluster to be used as sample. Meaning not all of the groups must or have a representative only those selected clusters say for example if we have three 
or three or four groups and then we randomly selected two and three so meaning we'll just interview people from these groups or all of the people or respondents from this group so one and four has no or have no representatives unlike in stratified random sampling all groups or strata have a representative so what is the difference between stratified and cluster sampling so we have this take a look in stratified all stratum or groups have representatives okay so from the population we group them so we have four groups and then from these groups we pick some only you know, some so for group number one we have this so we have four for group two and so on so if you notice from these four different stratum so all of them have representatives now look at here in cluster sampling so we have the population and then we group them into eight population uh, eight clusters or groups so we will randomly select clusters out of this eight so we've selected one two six and eight so we will collect our data only from these clusters so if you notice other clusters have no representatives so that is the difference between the two stratified sampling all strata have representative but in cluster sampling not all clusters have representatives